Bruce Pack and Executive Intelligence Review have just published an exclusive memo from a group of influentials tied to the Russian government, the Izborsk Club, warning of the strategic consequences of continued agitation in Ukraine. They warn that Ukraine is being transformed into a new hotspot for Europe and the entire world, and into a hotbed of instability and chaos on Russia's borders. The strategic significance of Ukraine today is that the crisis there threatens to become the trigger for the onset of a thermonuclear confrontation between Russia and the United States. Don't get me wrong. I consider, I consider Republicans patriots who love this country just as much we do. Tell us about your plan for nuclear war with Russia. I'm sorry. Who's who? who Who's that back there? What, what the heck are you talking about? On Tuesday, February 11th, 381 members of Congress voted for H.R.E.S. 447, authorizing support for the openly fascist opposition forces in Ukraine. Russia warns America, we will respond with nukes. Now, this article is from Paul Joseph Watson, who's been following the developing situation. As for America's intent to provide this criminal regime with a $1 billion aid package, as far as I understand, U.S. law forbids financial aid to any nation where a legitimately elected leader was deposed in a military coup or by other illegal means. I direct this to the Congress, Senate and Supreme Court of the United States and firmly advise them to review the legality of the Ukrainian government. By your own laws, you are forbidden from funding bandits. The United States will stand with the international community in affirming that there will be costs for any military intervention in Ukraine. There would be costs, he just said. Kind of begs the question, what exactly is he referring to? What kind of costs are we talking? Uh, the intention here is to provoke a confrontation with Russia. We are on the brink of thermonuclear war. And if Obama is not removed from office this week, or at least the process begun this week, to impeach this madman, who is on the brink of bringing the world into a thermonuclear war that could, could exterminate the entire human race, uh, trying to provoke Russia, Russia which lost 20 million people in World War II fighting fascism, and is now watching NATO placing a fascist-run regime in power in Ukraine on their border, leaving Russia defenseless, while the U.S. is also placing missile systems all along the Russian border, which clearly are targeting uh, a first strike capacity against Russia uh, by putting in the ability to uh, take out the second strike response. This is, we are on the brink of a global thermonuclear war brought about by this madman in the White House and his supporters in NATO uh, who have, who are trying to provoke Russia into taking some sort of action to justify what they plan as a nuclear assault against Russia and potentially also against China. Since of course you're dealing here with the entire Officials of the European Union and the U.S. executive branch present everything backwards from reality. It is one of the formulas which Nazi propaganda employed most successfully. They accuse the party that is defending itself of aggression. What we are seeing in Ukraine and in Syria is a Western project, a new kind of war. In both places, you see a clear anti-Russian approach, and as is well known, Wars today begin with psychological and information warfare operations. After the information war, they are preparing a land and sea in Ukraine. Keep in mind that under the cover of information commotion, U.S. ships are entering the Black Sea, that is, near Ukraine. They are sending Marines, and they have also begun to deploy more tanks in Europe. After the information war, they are preparing for an operation by land and sea possibly also by air. General Ivashov concludes, I assume that the foreign ministry understands that we are at war. Now in power for barely a week, representatives of the new Ukrainian government are already threatening to literally go nuclear if they don't get their way. A deputy from the Svoboda party warns that Kiev could go back on its own constitution and restock its nuclear arsenals within six months. Anastasia Cherkina reports. 
Double standards galore. Washington suffers sleepless nights and paranoia when it comes to the nuclear capabilities of countries like Iran. Iran's nuclear program. Iran's nuclear program. Iran's nuclear program. But the U.S. turns a blind eye when it comes to provocative statements coming out of Kiev. One member of the Ukrainian parliament's ultra-nationalist Svoboda party warned that if Russia doesn't tread carefully, it will be dealing with a nuclear power. That's the rhetoric despite Ukraine signing up to the International Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty of 1994. The Russian armed forces will be forced out of Crimea and the Black Sea port of Sevastopol. Ukraine and NATO will develop an expanding partnership leading to the appearance of U.S. and NATO bases in Ukraine and Crimea. The unrest will open up the establishment in eastern Ukraine of bases for training terrorists to operate not only in the Caucasus, but in Siberia and the Volga Basin. Finally, the techniques of the Euromaidan will be extended into major Russian cities, especially those with existing ethnic tensions. Despite these obvious threats, the view from Washington, D.C. political circles remains bleak, with congressmen allowing their votes to be used for a larger, very dangerous geopolitical what game. What I've been saying since J January 1st is that we're now in a countdown toward a thermonuclear war. And what we're in now is just provo provocations against Russia to try to set up a situation which will trigger a Russian response of the type they want, and then they will immediately launch thermonuclear war. Now, my, my time scale was saying, well, by the 1st of March, we are already at that time, if not earlier, we are on the verge of actual thermonuclear mutual extermination. This could be getting pretty serious, couldn't it? Because um, there's talk of a military build-up, uh, U.S. Uh, build-up near the Ukrainian border. Um, is this just simply saber-rattling, or is this really a fairly uh, untimely and not particularly good idea to, to raise a military uh, presence at a time of increasing tensions? Why, why is the U.S. doing that? I think it's part of the bigger U.S. plan. As the I two statements before. translated by EIR and LaRouche Pack over the past 48 hours show that despite what is being propagated in the Western media, Russia is on high alert. In the memo by the Izborsk Club, whose members include presidential advisor Sergei Glaziev and retired general Leonid Ivashov, the authors warn first that Ukraine faces the risk of going fascist with the Western support given to an explicitly neo-Nazi faction of the Euromaidan. That support violates the 1994 U.S.-Russia-Ukraine-U.K. Treaty. According to the Izborsk memo, if that 1994 treaty is violated because one of the parties refuses to come to the table, then the situation will escalate and should be handled like the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962 with direct U.S.-Russian bilateral negotiations. When Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov raises specter of world war at the annual Fecunda Security Conference in early February, Western sources accused Russia of making bellicose statements. However, the memo from the Izborsk Club outlines what Russia perceives as direct threats to its security and territorial integrity. These are threats that have never even been acknowledged by the sources calling Russia's assessment bellicose. I would like to read a quote to you from Vladimir Yakunin, who heads the state railways monopoly in Russia, Russian railway. Quote, we are witnessing a huge geopolitical game of which the aim is the destruction of Russia as a geopolitical opponent of the U.S. and of this global finance oligarchy. That says it all. Gerald, we'll leave it there. Thank you. Publisher of the Trends Journal, Gerald Salenti, live here on RT International. Thanks for your time. Thank you. We present this information here because these are the provocations that lead to world war. There is an active war faction inside the United States, which is using the executive branch and much of the Congress. If the intention is to prevent war, the way to do that is to remove Barack Obama from office. Even if citizens of the United States refuse to believe we are on the path to world war, that is a perception in Russia, and when your potential enemy believes you are at war, 
you are at war.